Okay, learning, School of Ethi. Okay, this presentation is all about learning, in particular how we use our senses to learn about the world and then what theories inform the understanding of how we construct meaning within that world. We'll be looking at this diagram and unpacking its meaning in relation to teaching games, in particular the language you've been using in class, around techniques, skills, strategies and tactics. So, how can our practice be informed by different learning theories? And in particular, how does this influence our gameplay? So, the first learning theory is behaviorism. That is at the heart of our understanding of learning and was the external cues we saw that people had learned something. So when the behavior changed, we said that implied there was learning. As our rat here demonstrates, we press lever for food. However, this type of learning is very much about the external world. Then we had the computer metaphor. So the idea of programming somebody to be effective was a, was a notion of learning. So the computer became more the metaphor of how we learn. In other words, if we just tell people how to do it right, they will then learn those and create a model. So that became known as mentalism or cognition in its purest sense. However, that notion still implies an internal representation of an external world. So right now we are measuring by a correspondence of what is out there and what we have now taken in, either reflected by our behavior to show it or by representations in our head. However, we don't have a TV in our head. So the idea is that we are always, as individuals, under construction, always associating our ideas and assimilating them to things that we've previously learned. And this is the idea of a constructivism, and that through constructivism we make meaning of the world that we live in. However, the mechanisms by which we come to know the world only make sense to us based on the realities that we all share. So games make sense and construct our realities. So this notion of a sort of social construction of meaning then drives our understanding of how we learn, in that it makes sense when others do what we are doing and cohere to the realities that we believe in. However, even that social construction is contained within a pre-existing language structure or beliefs. So here we have a centered world on finance, economy, society and planet, which has led to our imminent destruction, prophesized by scientists, which is now asking us to shift our notions from finance to planetary concerns. So this sort of eco notions of learning is changing the way in which we construct how the weather is affecting our lives and making meaning of what is important. So we are born into this value structure and it causes us to think differently than our social milieu. And this gives us a notion that we have a, a cultural and a critical discourse. That everything we know is being pre-existing our way of seeing because we're brought into a language system that decides how we know. However, all of that relies upon nature. And how do things in nature learn to construct a behavior that allows them to exist in the world and to basically produce more of their own or to eat or to get away from prey? All those sort of simple rules construct behaviors that means that as collectives, individuals become learners. And so the language system that they draw on is constructed within the social, economic and ecological world that makes sense out of what they use. So this gives us a sense that everything in our world is complex and emergent and that as we emerge, we actually have sort of patterns of, that reoccur from the smallest protein to the cell to organism to humans and then our organization society and that these are collectives that keep organizing and that actually humans are just one such collective within an ecosystem that's continuously evolving. Okay, so all these learning theories interact around whenever we teach. And as you can see, um, the notion of behaviorism uh, is implicit in a lot of our actions. So the technique and going to a model is what drove our initial understanding of how to teach phys ed. And that really came down from the left-hand side of the diagram here, where you see it was about finding the perfect uh, technique, practicing it, and then transferring it into a game. And then in a game, it became a skill. However, the confusion was what 
or how does a skill get learnt in the first place? So this perception of the world was always create a model, repeat the model, internalize the model, and then you become an effective learner. However, I never learned that way to play tennis. It was really much by repetition and drawing on multiple models. However, this idea of correspondence drove a lot of our education system and really is why we have a system planned the way it is right now, where we sort of test you to a fixed bit of knowledge. However, it does give us some uh, confidence around a model to draw on, but how you work with that model is what we're actually looking for. How does that model adapt? And that shifts us to the other side. So now when you think about the TJFU approach, it sort of makes you situate your learning. And it's always in relation to a game that you can play, but which structure allows you to learn the interactions and in relation to other players. And then gradually you learn a model of how to play using skills that adapt to the skills of others. So this is really a social understanding and that that is where the other coherence theories is around construction, social construction, cultural and critical discourse and ecological all come together. And these are what your readings are really trying to explore that you're starting to summarize now on the forum. And really, if you can unpack those, you'll help yourself become a way better teacher as you work on the notion of coherence rather than on correspondence. However, all these things work together. Correspondence we need and coherence we need. And you can probably see the pattern of these models connecting right back to the teaching styles where correspondence uh, corresponding to the world really refers to reproducing those um, uh, reproduction styles that uh, st um, Moston talks about, like practice, and uh, reciprocal, and command. Whereas coherence are more around the production styles where you actually come up with a solution to adapt to a problem that you're now engaged in. So these notions have existed in our profession for a long time. However, the ecological notion tries to encapsulate all of them. And in fact, it pulls them all together into a whole. And if you look over here, these descriptions, you can start seeing how learning is really a building together of these different notions as we start to see learn something as more than human world in which learning happens and that nature learns and we are actually part of nature. And that, so that process leads us to a real sense of confidence that learning is something that we can continuously explore and not be stuck in any one of these camps but actually draw on them as needed in the context in which we're working. That gets us back to our gameplay model, how we underline the teaching process that we have to engage in as teachers of gameplay with students.